Hi, today we will explain the storyline of a film called Orphan which was released back in 2009. Esther, come on, we gotta go! This film tells about a family who adopts a daughter from an orphanage, but it turns out the child's real identity is an adult woman who is mentally ill and ultimately brings terrible disaster to the family. Here is the full storyline. Okay, this is our new student, name's Esther Coleman. The beginning of this film showed a man named John who brought his wife, Kate, who was about to give birth. Kate was then taken by a nurse, but suddenly the scene immediately moved to the operating room where the male doctors were doing something painful on Kate using scary tools. Everything's gonna be okay. A nurse said that the baby Kate was carrying had died, then Kate screamed in pain. It turned out that it was all just a dream. Kate lived with her husband named John, a son named Daniel and a deaf daughter named Max. Even though their family looked happy, Kate seemed to have mental anxiety that made her take medication every day and visit a psychiatrist named Dr. Browning. One day, Kate told Dr. Browning about a bad dream she had. Kate assumed that it had something to do with her and John's plans to adopt a child. Kate felt that she was not ready to adopt a child, but after talking to John again, she confidently agreed to the plan. Kate and John then went to an all-girls orphanage to see the children there. They were greeted by Sister Abigail who seemed pleased with their arrival. John's in the bathroom. You think you'll find us? Or you While Kate was watching the children playing, John went outside to have a smoke, but he suddenly heard a voice singing. John followed the sound and found a girl named Esther drawing alone. John finally talked to Esther and looked amazed at her. Not long after Kate came, she and John were captivated by Esther painting and her good behavior. Finally, they decided to adopt Esther. Very mature for her age, and she's very well met. A few weeks later, Esther was brought to their house. She was introduced to her other children and also John's mother named Barbara. That's precious. It's a pleasure to meet you. Max seemed very happy with Esther, while Daniel didn't seem to like her. Like Esther's life in the house began. She seemed very familiar with Max, but some strange things started to emerge from her. Esther liked to wear clothes that were too flashy and locked the bathroom when taking a shower. As a small child, it was considered strange to lock the bathroom in her own house. Sweetheart, this isn't really a school dress. Kate who was tidying Esther's clothes also found a Bible that looked shabby with a man's photo inside. Fearing that Esther would see it, Kate quickly put it away. Even though Kate saw Esther as a little strange she tried to keep loving her, she taught Esther to play the piano then took her to see her favorite white rose which was the symbol of her third child who had died. Esther seemed to show her sadness and Kate really appreciated it. However, it turned out that Esther's oddities were even worse. One day at school, Esther was bullied by her classmate named Brenda. Esther's Bible was thrown all over the place and when Brenda was about to remove the ribbon around Esther's neck, she screamed hysterically. Is this a Bible? The next odd thing happened when Kate and John were making out in the kitchen. At that time they were very surprised because Esther had been watching them for quite a while. When Kate tried to talk about it with Esther, she instead said things that a child should not say. Kate finally started talking about Esther's strangeness to John, but John didn't seem too bothered by that. One day John invited Esther and Max to play in the park. Esther noticed a woman named Joyce approaching John and talked to him intimately. When John wasn't paying attention, Esther went to approach Brenda who was also there, then Esther pushed her off the slide and broke her leg. Soldiering on without me. It's not the same. The incident was actually seen by Max. When Kate and John asked Esther about Brenda, she said she didn't do it, and Max said in sign language that Brenda just slipped. Kate saw the strangeness of Esther. We're just playing, I swear. At that time Esther played the piano very well, so she had been pretending that she could not play the piano. Kate again talked about this to John, but again John defended Esther and made excuses for her actions. Kofsky, without understanding, she's been lying to me. I get jealous of every woman that I talk to. The conversation turned into a debate when Kate said Esther told her about John talking intimately with Joyce. They then argued and talked about each other's mistakes. Esther, who heard their argument, smiled happily. Wanted to fuck somebody else! You put our child... It's only been two years since you told me. One day, Sister Abigail visited Kate's house and talked about Esther. She said that when something dangerous happened Esther was always there, John looked in disbelief that it was all Esther's fault, while Kate felt suspicious. 
Sister Abigail said she would ask about Esther's past at her old orphanage in Russia. You never had any trouble with her? I didn't. I'm afraid I may have made a mistake. Esther overheard Sister Abigail talking and planned something. She tricked Max into helping her. I checked into it further. It was arson. They then searched John's room to find the keys to Daniel's treehouse. Previously Daniel's treehouse was locked by John because Daniel spoke harshly to Esther. Max managed to find the key but Esther also found a safe containing a gun. After that Esther took Max outside. They waited in the street that Sister Abigail would pass. As the car approached, Esther pushed Max into the middle of the road and startled Sister Abigail and sent her car sliding to the side of the road. When Sister Abigail came down, Esther hit her with a hammer. Esther then went to the treehouse and changed her clothes. She kept all the evidence of her murder in a bag in the treehouse. One day Kate and John took Esther to Dr. Browning but the psychiatrist was tricked by Esther and instead mentioned things that cornered Kate. The relationship between Kate and John was increasingly tenuous. It wasn't true at all. I, I, I've done everything, right? After returning from Dr. Browning, Kate received news that Sister Abigail had not yet returned home. A search was soon carried out and her body was found. Kate still didn't give up on her suspicions of Esther and she searched the internet for articles about children who had the heart to kill people. She told her report to John, but again John did not believe that there was something wrong with Esther and he was even more annoyed with Kate's behavior who always accused her. Why does everyone around here get the benefit of the doubt? I want to know more about her. I want to know where she came from. I'm not sure this is what she meant. She could have told Esther really understood the conditions in the house and she tried to get John's attention more and more. She said that Kate didn't like her, but John denied this and said that Esther should try to get close to Kate. Finally when John and Kate were in one room, Esther came and she said she wanted to give a surprise to Kate. It turned out that Esther gave lots of Kate's favorite white roses and immediately Kate became hysterical and held Esther's hand while saying why Esther had the heart to do it. At that time Esther screamed in pain and John immediately separated them. When night fell, Esther deliberately broke her own hand using pincers. The next day she screamed for John and said her hand still hurt. When Kate entered the room, John accused Kate of breaking Esther's hand. Daddy. Kate who didn't do it of course defended herself but John was cold. Due to stress, Kate bought two bottles of alcohol. Sorry honey. Oh my god. Maybe you should sleep downstairs. You know, we can have it. Thanks. At home she tried to drink it, but then she managed to stop herself. In the past she often drank alcohol but she had stopped. Finally Kate threw away the bottle of alcohol that she was trying to drink. The next day when dropping the kids off at school, Kate got out of the car chasing Daniel whose book fell from his bag. Then Esther changed gears and made the car slowly reverse. Fortunately, the car only hit a snowdrift and Max was not injured. The scene switched to Dr. Browning. There Kate and John were consulting Dr. Browning about what happened. Kate again said that it was Esther, but Dr. Browning and John didn't believe it. Apart from that, Max who was the victim also said that it was not Esther who was the culprit. Kate persisted and said that Max always covered up Esther's mistakes. John then showed a bottle of alcohol belonging to Kate and said that the accident was because Kate was drunk. Kate tried to defend herself but was completely unsuccessful. John found out about the alcohol from Esther which made Kate even more convinced that Esther was the mastermind behind all the chaos that existed. At home, Daniel asked Max what really happened about the car accident. Max confirmed that Esther was the culprit but she didn't want to tell their parents. Max then showed the pictures to Daniel. The pictures showed all the crimes that Esther committed including when she killed sister Abigail. Max also told Daniel that the evidence for her murder was in the treehouse. Daniel then said that he would take the evidence and make everyone believe that Esther was a criminal. Unbeknownst to them, it turned out that Esther was listening to Daniel's plan from behind the door. Sister Abigail? Kate did not stop to find out the truth of Esther. She vowed to protect her children. She then looked for the Bible that she had found in Esther's room. After finding it, Kate checked the Bible and she saw many adult male photos in it and on the back of the Bible there was the word Sarn Institute. How could you not know anything about her? The Sullivans could have been At that time Kate immediately found out about that place and called it. She managed to connect to it, but the person who picked up the phone was speaking Russian. Not long after, a person who spoke English came. Kate admitted that she wanted to ask about her adopted child who used to live there. But that person said that Sarn Institute was not an orphanage, 
but a mental hospital. Kate then sent photos of Esther to Sarn Institute to check Esther's past. Institute is not an orphanage, it is a mental hospital. At the same time, Daniel who tried to retrieve evidence from the treehouse was trapped by Esther. There Esther confessed to killing sister Abigail and she brought out all the evidence that she was hiding, but after that she poured gasoline and set it on fire. Are you looking for this? Are you crazy? Esther quickly got out of the treehouse and locked Daniel inside. Daniel screamed for his mother and tried to avoid the fire, but the treehouse had collapsed and Daniel fell unconscious. Esther who had been smiling when she saw Daniel trapped took a rock and tried to hit him on the head, but Max came and pushed Esther. Kate who began to see the fire growing immediately ran from the house to that place. Okay? You're gonna be all right. They were now in the hospital, a doctor said that Daniel could survive. Kate asked John to talk and told him that Esther did not come from an orphanage but a mental hospital, but John who was stubborn still couldn't believe it. While they were talking, Esther went into Daniel's room and smothered him. Max who was worried about Daniel immediately ran to meet his mother and tried to tell her something. At that moment the doctor and nurse ran into Daniel's room and said that Daniel had heart failure. Kate immediately got angry and ran to slap Esther. She screamed hysterically and everyone there tried to separate them. Finally she was given a sedative injection and lost consciousness. When she grew conscious, she was lying in a room, Kate immediately asked Daniel and John said he would be fine. John also said she had to rest there for a few days, while he and the children would go home. At home, John who looked stressed drank alcohol and fell asleep on the sofa. When he woke up, he saw Esther beside him wearing sexy clothes and makeup, Esther then tried to seduce him but John became angry and told Esther to go to her room. Esther ran to her room and cried. Just stop talking and go upstairs, go to your rooms. At the same time, Kate got a call from an unknown number, when she picked up it turned out to be from Dr. Varava from Sarn Institute. The man explained that Esther was not a 9-year-old child but a 33-year-old woman who had mental illness and was very wild. Esther had a rare hormone disorder that made her stunted like a child, he also told the fate of the family that Esther had visited, all the families were killed and the house was burned. When Dr. Varava heard that Esther was at home with her husband and children, he told Kate to call her husband and told him to leave the house immediately and take his child. After hearing that Kate immediately called John, but he never picked up, she then rushed home to her house driving a car while trying to call John all the time. Meanwhile at home, Esther who had been crying now turned angry and raged in her room. John who heard the commotion went straight to Esther's room but she was not there. I need the police, we have an intruder in our home. John then came out and turned off the light in Esther's room, but before leaving, he saw a spot of light. Now he clearly saw Esther's paintings which were very different from the original. When it's light the paintings that she made looked beautiful and funny, but when it was dark, her paintings were very scary. As soon as John came out of there the electricity in the house went out, everything went dark. In the darkness Esther stabbed John in the back with a knife until he fell. Esther stabbed him several times again until John did not move. The murder was apparently seen by Max who immediately ran away and hid. Shortly thereafter Kate came by crashing her car into her house while Esther went to get the gun that was in John's room. Kate was very sad when she saw her husband had died, but she quickly got up to save Max. Kate walked in the dark to find Max running away from Esther. Max hid in a greenhouse full of plants and Kate who was on top of the greenhouse found her and told her to hide, but Esther also found Max and tried to shoot. Kate shattered the glass and threw herself onto Esther and knocked her out. Max approached Kate who was also unconscious and shook her body. Finally she got up and took the gun from Esther. Kate had previously called 911 and now she quickly took Max out of the house, but apparently Esther was still alive and chased them. Kate and Esther then fought over the frozen lake. Max had the gun that Kate dropped and shot at them, but the shot hit the frozen lake and cracked it. Kate and Esther fell together and fought in the lake. At the end of the fight, Kate managed to get out and kick Esther until she drowned. Kate then carried Max and soon many police arrived and helped them. 